Welcome back you guys, I hope you're doing well, and today we're going to be talking about NBA role players that you might have forgotten about. These players had decent careers, but they don't really warrant a full what happened to their career video like I've done in the past, so I decided to put these players all in one video. Let's talk about their careers and where they are today. First I would like to talk about today's sponsor, Honey. Honey is a free browser extension that has over 7 million users and what it does is it automatically finds you the best deals on the web so you will always find the best prices on anything you want to buy online. I'm sure you guys shop online, I'm always shopping online, like right now I'm looking at some all black air prestos and the Honey extension is doing all the work for me to find a better deal and they find a discount code that gets me $5 off which is a little bit under normal retail for those sneakers. I don't have to go searching the corners of the internet for a discount code like I have in the past. If there's a discount code or a better price, the Honey extension will find it for me then apply the savings. And it is extremely fast to sign up. It took me 10 seconds and two clicks on my mouse to install on Safari. It also works on Chrome and Firefox. Again, it's free and will help you save money. So if this is something you'd be interested in, click the link down below, join honey.com slash cane, and go out there and save some money. Do you guys remember Chris Copeland? He played four seasons in the NBA from 2012 to 2016. He played for the Knicks, Pacers, Bucks, but I remember him the most from his rookie season with the Knicks. Copeland actually declared for the NBA draft in 2006, but he went undrafted and didn't get his dream of making it to the NBA until 2012 when he was 27. Cope was one of the first guys off the bench on that really fun Knicks team that won 54 games back in 2013. In 56 games, Copeland shot 42% from the three-point line at 6'8", 235 pounds. Copeland was a legit three-point shooter. He had back-to-back 30-point -back games in the month of April, which helped him win Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month. His first year with the Knicks would be his best season because his game kind of just fell off a cliff after that. When he signed a two-year deal with the Pacers, he became a worse shooter. Copeland's problem was that his only real skill was his three-point shot. He wasn't a guy that was taking you off the dribble. He also was a defensive liability, so if he's not making three-point shots, it's hard to keep him on the floor. He was really slow moving side to side. His last year in the league would be with the Bucks in 2016, and after that he made a return back to Europe. So what was he up to recently? Well this past summer he played in something called the basketball tournament on ESPN where the prize for the winning team was $2 million. His team did not win the tournament but Cope led his team in scoring. Let's go on to the next player. Some of you guys might remember Andre Blatch from his time with the Brooklyn Nets and some of you guys definitely remember him from the time with the Washington Wizards. Blatch was a 6 foot 11, 260 pound center that had scoring skills in the post. Andre's biggest flaw, and this is why he's out of the league, was that he was a black hole on offense. His points never really came within the flow of an offense. He liked to hold the ball for a long time, but like most professional basketball players, when he was on, he looked unstoppable and was pretty hard to defend. Blatch took a backseat to Gilbert Arenas and other players for most of his years in Washington, but in his second to last year with them, he averaged 17 points, 8 rebounds on 44% shooting. The thing I remember the most about Blatch was when he was trying so hard to get his 10th rebound for a triple double in a game in 2010. There is a 2 minute video you can search up about him trying to get a triple double, it's pretty funny. Andre had a lot of drama with the Wizards though, he fought JaVale McGee at a nightclub that got him suspended and he was shut down from the team one year because he was so out of shape. The Wizards eventually used their amnesty provision on him to get him off the team and he signed with that Brooklyn Nets team that had Darren Williams, KG and Pierce on it for his last two years in the league. So what is he up to now? Well he signed with the Flying Tigers of the Chinese Basketball Association in 2014 and he's playing in the CBA right now. Let's go into the third player. Next up we have Sasha Vujicic and there are two moments that I remember him the most for. One were his two clutch free throws in game 7 versus the Celtics in the 2010 finals and two when he had I think 20 points in a game against the Celtics in the 2008 finals. Sasha was a first round pick in the 2004 NBA draft. You know getting drafted to the Lakers is a great thing but Sasha was on those Laker teams in the 2000s that looked nothing like championship teams. Those were the rough years. His biggest offensive skill was his three point shot. In the 2008 season he averaged 9 points per game on 43% shooting. That percentage was good for 8th in the NBA that year. Sasha was a key piece for the Lakers bench that did not have much 3 point shooting. In 2010 he was traded to the New Jersey Nets and that would be his last season in the NBA until 2014 when he got a 10 day deal with the Clippers. The Clippers did not pick him up after that and he signed to an Italian club. 
You know, I would assume that that would be his last year in the NBA, but it wasn't. He played for two more years with the Knicks in 2015 and 2016. So what is Sasha up to today? Well, he signed with an Italian club over the summer, and that's where he's playing right now. You know, not a bad career for Sasha. He got to play 10 years in the NBA and be a part of two championship teams. Let's go into the fourth player. Dewan Blair played seven years in the NBA with the Spurs, Mavericks, and Wizards. But what you guys might remember him for is that he played basketball with no ACL in either knee. Yes, not one ACL gone, but two of them were gone. In high school, he had ACL surgery on both knees and both ligaments eventually disappeared. He was a really accomplished player in college, but he fell to the second round of the 2009 draft because of his knee problems and because he was a 6'7 power forward. The Spurs picked him with the 37th pick and he went on to play in all 82 games and averaged 8 points and 6 rebounds and he got selected to the all-rookie second team. He was a really good rebounder for his size, he had a 20-20 game in the final game of his rookie year. Dewan was looking like a steal for the Spurs, he was giving them a lot of energy off the bench and at one point he was even their starting center. But when the Spurs got Boris Diaw in 2013, he started to lose minutes. Dewan actually said in an interview that the Spurs would have won the 2013 finals if they played him more. Blair signed with the Mavs in the summer of 2013, then he was traded to the Wizards where he would play his final two seasons. So what has he been up to lately? He played for the Lakers and Mavericks G League teams in 2017, and two months ago he signed with a pro team in Argentina. It's pretty impressive how Dewan was able to play for a high level for multiple seasons without either ACL, so why is he out of the league? Well, Dewan's problems was not just his height at power forward, but he really couldn't keep up with the NBA game anymore. He was just too slow and heavy. With a lot more teams running fast-paced offenses and power forwards and centers that can shoot, it's hard for him to keep up. Okay, so for the last player, we got Steve Novak. Steve played 11 seasons in the NBA. He played for the Rockets, Clippers, Mavs, Spurs, Raptors, Thunder, Jazz, and the Bucks. But I think most of us remember him from his two fun years with the Knicks. Steve brought Aaron Rodgers' discount double check celebration to the NBA and was one of the more fun players on that Knicks team with Chris Copeland that I mentioned earlier. In the 2012 season, he led the NBA in three-point percentage. He shot 47% from the three-point line. With how well the Knicks moved the ball, Novak became a huge weapon on catch-and-shoot threes. Even though I'm not a Knicks fan, for some reason I missed that Knicks team with Pablo Prigioni and Novak. That was a fun team. His last year in the NBA was with the Bucks in 2016, and he retired. Again, these are players that don't really warrant a full video on their own, so I decided to fit them all in this video. Is there another role player you think I should have had on here? Let me know. I appreciate it if you're still watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you guys in my next video.